Project Black Bear was a brain burp. The brain burp. Um, <laughs> and it came about as a result of a conversation at the um, Civic Education Institute, and in where we were discussing uh, two programs that we had going, one in uh, Clay Ellum um, and one over near Spokane. And uh, one had to deal with uh, the analysis and study of, of uh, cougars, and one had to do with the analysis and study of mule deer. <clears throat> and how do they affect um, the environment around those communities, and how do they affect the people? And how do the two of them interrelate with each other? So we were discussing it from the standpoint uh, that, gee, it would be really neat to have something kind of like that go on around in the Olympia area. And I had spent the day before uh, out in the forest up uh, in the Capitol Forest looking at trees that had been virtually destroyed by black bear. Um, it was early in the spring and the bear were out looking for food. And one of the foods that black bear uh, enjoy is fresh spring sap out of uh, conifer trees. And so they go out and they strip the bark off the tree to get the sap, but it also kills the tree. So we were trying to figure out, you know, how can we deal with the damage that these black bear were doing in our forest? Um, you know, they could ruin 30 or 40 trees a day. Well, when you figure that that tree could be worth a couple of $300, well, that's a lot of damage, and you get a bunch of black bear doing that. Holy mackerel. The Tumwater School District representative there said, well, wait a minute, I've got a good idea for a project. Why don't we try something local so I can get my school and my students involved in citizen science in terms of helping answer a problem. Um, so we kicked that around a bit, and Doug and I came up with the idea of, well, let's try Capital Forest, black bears, forestry, those kinds of associations and have some students get together and help us work on that. Um, one of the people that first started Project Black Bear was uh, actually Doug Sutherland, the Commissioner of Public Lands, and Jeff Cannings, the Director of the uh, Department of Fish and Wildlife, wanted to um, address the problem that we have in Capitol Forest where there seems to be a lot of uh, damage to the trees caused by bears. And so they decided it would be good to work together um, and to start an education program and asked me and Margaret Tudor, my counterpart at Fish and Wildlife, to start the project. So we started that about three years ago. Uh, the main purpose is we had a question. We had a question about number of black bears in Capitol Forest relative to the tree damage those bears were, were doing or responsible for in the springtime. So what is the population of bears? It's just a large population of bears and this is an atypical situation or is it a normal population of bears? and they're somehow the age of the stand is particularly vulnerable for that kind of predation to go on. A lot of questions that we had to answer how typical this is relative to other situations throughout the west side of the state. So we wanted to get at the idea of can we figure out a, a critical concentration of bears, a critical habitat or age of the trees, and how do those come together and create the problem with them? What we've done is we've been out trapping for the past several years, um, trying to catch some black bears to be able to radio collar, and now we actually just obtained some GPS collars. Um, we haven't had a lot of luck, and that's something that that's, uh, involves one of the issues as far as the bear damage and, and what the bears are doing and how many bears are out there. Um, what we do is we go out and we, we trap the bears ideally and we catch them, put a radio collar on them or now a GPS collar and then we can start looking at where are they going, what are they doing, what is happening so we can start seeing is there bear damage in this area and what bears are traveling in that area so we can see if it's one bear doing a lot of damage or if it's a lot of bears doing a little damage and because 
that really will determine how we manage the system and how DNR and Fish and Wildlife deal with the issue. Somebody had to go find out and try to figure out all of that kind of interesting information. What is the life cycle of a bear? Um, how long do they do this? And so by using uh, um, students, they can do the kind of really fine analytical work. It helps them looking at uh, a kind of, of uh, activity that bear do and it could give us significant uh, analytical work um, that not only benefited us and the landowners, but it also benefited the students. It got them out into the woods, got them out looking at, doing analytical work, and beginning to see that the kinds of things that they do in the classroom and the kinds of things that they're going to be doing in their life are connected. And I think that's really key. One of the, the programs that uh, the Department of Natural Resources and Department of Fish and Wildlife and then a nonprofit group called the Pacific Education Institute, we're putting together a joint project uh, called Culminating Projects in Natural Resources because we understand that in 2008, every graduating student in, in Washington needs to do a culminating project. So we're starting to work with teachers and with students to identify what kind of projects are possible on, uh, on state lands um, and working with Fish and Wildlife, DNR, hopefully Department of Ecology, as well as on private lands, um, private forest lands, and get students out there doing work that's meaningful for the students, also work that is, needs to be done uh, for the uh, agencies and the organizations. So, uh, that will be coming on. We're going to get started this summer. We'll have a teacher, at least a teacher, work with us to go out in the field and work with our personnel and identify projects. I think that students being able to communicate what they've learned and what they think about what they've learned is really important. So, um, at a minimum, students could have um, an evening event where they'd invite parents in the local community to come to the school and, and hear it. They could lead tours out in the forest to show what they've learned and to show what they've been working on. I think going to some um, public community meetings would be really helpful to let city councils and, and the county commissioners know what they've discovered. Um, the public always has an opportunity to um, talk at public meetings and so I think it's really important for students to learn what those opportunities are, and what meetings they can go to, you know, the port commission meetings, the county commissioners, city council meetings, there's always an opportunity for the public to share what they know. That would be a great way to do it. And then also, um, I think forming a relationship with local um, reporters, like John Dodge with the Olympian is really interested in environmental issues and education, but there are education reporters and uh, business reporters who would be really interested in doing a story. So contacting the local media, radio, and, and the newspaper and inviting them to come out and see what you're doing would be a really good way to let people know. Students coming through this program are providing us with information that we can use uh, to benefit the forest, to benefit people, benefit the bear. Uh, I don't see this as a one-shot operation. Uh, I see this as a, a series of recommendations coming to us and we as land managers using the information. I see uh, monitoring by the students um, to continue to learn how the bear adapt, how we adapt, um, and to make further recommendations to be able to adjust what we're doing. Um, I see the students learning a lot about wildlife, learning a lot about forestry, learning about habitat and the benefits that all accrue to people. Uh, I can see this as an ongoing analysis of the relationship between an ever increasing population in an ever decreasing habitat arena. And what are the conflicts between the two? And how do we resolve those conflicts? Students are going to learn from it, they're going to benefit from it, the department's going to benefit from it. Uh, I think it's just a win-win all the way around. So it all depends on as you go through the process, as they say it's a living process, 
you can have the best laid plans, but they often go awry and you just have to work through it. But I th see it continuing into the future uh, for a number of years until we can answer the question we need to get answered.